Hi, welcome to Industry Standard Structural Design. Through this video, you can learn about how to calculate effective length factor so that you can widely use for your live projects. This is theoretical portion which is self-explanatory. In deep, you can learn in IS 456-2000. Effective length factor, where it should be used. Mostly, you will be doing analysis and design of structures in softwares like ETAPS, STATPRO, SAP2000, etc. In that, you can define this effective length factor parameter. So that software will consider this factor while designing the structural element, mainly in the design of slender columns. For, exa For example, this is staircase portion in a building where the mid landing beam is connected between these two columns, which is breaking this column in only one direction. Due to the modeling of this mid landing beam, there will be a joint or node created and that will break the column. Due to this breaking, software will consider only this 2 meter as a length of column in both y-axis and z-axis. But practically, the total length of column about y-axis is 2 meter because there is a beam connected and it will act as a restraint. But the total length of column about z-axis is 4 meter because there is no intermediate beams. Let us see how to calculate effective length factor for this example. About y-axis there is a beam tied and it will act as a restraint to the column A at bottom and for column B at top. So unsupported length is 2 meter for column A and 2 meter for column B. Also effective length factor is 1.2 and this 1.2 can be replaced based on the support condition of the column. For example effective length factor for cantilever column is 2 and this same can be referred in IS 456-2000. In about z axis, the unsupported length is 4 meter, that is length of column A plus length of column B. Because there is no intermediate beam, hence there is no restraint. So total unsupported length of column is 4 meter. Effective length factor about z axis is shown in calculation. That is, effective length factor for column A is unsupported length about z divided by length of column A into 1.2. Here, unsupported length about z divided by length of column A is general scale factor for column A and 1.2 is effective length factor. So you, you, so you need to multiply effective length factor 1.2 with general scale factor. The same procedure can be followed to calculate effective length factor for column B. This is example 2 for your better understanding, which is self-explanatory. Thank you. Please subscribe and turn on bell icon to watch more useful upcoming videos.